hello students so i am going to handle your 8th class my name is vivek kosur so i am going to be your science teacher okay so i am going to handle science of the 8th class so students there are 18 chapters in your ncert science book okay and uh, so we uh, we will see those chapters one by one okay so i am going to start first one chemistry chapter this is present in your ncert textbook so this is the fourth chapter fourth chapter of materials fourth chapter that is materials metals and non metals so this is i am going to start in this class today okay so so you we have come across so many materials around your world around your surroundings also you have come across so many materials for example if you take iron rubber cricket bat or if you can say silver silver also you come you came around your surroundings table chair wooden chair plastic chair and chair of made from metal so you will come across these kind of many materials a ball okay so these all are materials or the things we can call so these materials are classified as metals and non metals so what are metals what are non metals how they look what is their appearance what are the chemical reaction they do okay we all will all learn in this chapter and what are the difference between metals and non metals we will study about all this in chapter in this chapter so when you come across different materials in this world so those materials as i told they are classified as metals and non metals and some of them are even taken as metalloids they are having the properties of in between properties of metals and non metals okay those are called as metalloids we will come across all those things in the upcoming classes so today we will start with the properties of metals the first concept is properties of metal to which things to which materials we should call as metal for example if i say iron is a metal if i say gold is a metal so what kind of properties metals have what are the properties that metal should possess so we will learn about this in this okay so metals are so what are metals so these are the physical properties what we can say these are physical properties of metals okay physical properties these are not chemical properties so there are two types of properties physical properties and chemical properties so these all are metals are how to read this these are the properties of metals metals are generally in solid state okay the first property of metal is if i say metal means you have to imagine iron gold silver like this which are metals iron gold silver are examples of metals so you have to think on that way so metals generally in solid state see metals are what happens they are always in solid state you know about the states of matter they are solid liquid and gas okay you know liquids can flow water then juice these all are liquids okay so solids means solids means they cannot flow they are hard liquids and gases you already know about the, uh, those things so metals are generally in solid state generally they are in solid state very rarely we find that uh, metals are in liquid state there is only one liquid metal that we call it as what we call for that mercury mercury is the metal that is present in liquid state the only metal present in liquid state is mercury okay we call it as liquid metal mercury is also called as liquid metal okay we have remember that mercury is the only metal present in liquid state we call it as Li uh, sorry liquid metal okay so except that 99% of the metals are they are in solid state 
maximum generally except mercury all the metals are in solid state generally they are in solid state i hope you understood if you take gold if you take uh, iron if you take silver they are in solid state so second point is metals are hard when you touch the iron when you touch the gold you will find the hardness of the metal it is not soft it is not smooth you can feel the hardness of that metal if you want to touch steel uh, sorry iron and uh, uh, silver materials you will find the hardness of the metals so metals are usually hard they are very hard third one they are lustrous you don't know about this word meaning okay what is lustrous lustrous means the surface should have shiny nature that means it should have a shining surface metals are having shining surface if the metal is having shining surface we call it as lustrous so maximum metals are having shining surface if you take iron it is having a shining surface at the end if you take silver it is shining surface it is having shining silver shines gold shines even iron is also shining little bit so that is shining surface they are having if you take uh, iron with one side and wood wood with other side wood you know already a wooden stick or a iron stick if you say you can see there there is a shining surface or if you say in you are very close uh, familiar with scales if you are having metal scales and plastic scale a metal scale is of 30 cm and plastic scales uh, in your compass they are of 15 cm if they available okay if you see them these plastic scales are not having any shiny nature but if you see the metal scale there is a shiny appearance of the surface so that we call it as lustrous so the word lustrous meaning is the property by which the substances shine have a shiny nature on the surface the property by which the substances are having shiny nature on the surface or the shiny surface we call it as lustrous so these three points we already understood so we we'll move to the fourth point if you have any doubts okay you can ask me the number is given in whatsapp group so you can ask me later so fourth point of metals is they are malleable and ductile this is very much important point question will be asked in this what is malleability and what is ductility okay so first understand what is malleable and what is ductile see metals can be beaten into thin sheets if a metal is given you can cut it okay you can beat it okay till how much you can beat it you can make it very very clearly thin sheets you can you have seen very thin sheets of copper you might have seen so you could see very thin sheets of iron so we can beat the metal so that we can make them into thin sheets those are called as that property is called as malleable what is malleability i will write it this question will be asked please note down this define malleability they will ask this question in exam define malleability or define ductility malleability you should remember this please note down this malleability the property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets the property of metals by which by which they can be beaten into thin sheets they can be beaten into thin sheets thin sheets is called malleability is called malleability please note down this this is very much important this question will definitely come for one mark if it is asked with ductility it will be of two mark 
or it is asked for only malleability will be of one mark. The property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets is called malleability. You should remember this. What is malleability and what is ductility? I hope you are writing here. I will write. So these are the properties. So what it says? The property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets is called malleability. So define malleability. The property of metals. It is the property of metal by which they can be beaten or metals can be beaten into thin sheets. When they can be beaten into thin sheets, we call it as malleability. So this is one mark question. Definitely you ask. So example, you can uh, beat the copper and make it into very very thin sheets. Thin means very thickness is very much small. Okay. And you can beat uh, go uh, sorry gold also, and you can beat uh, iron also to make them into very very thin sheets. Okay, this is called malleability. So the next one is the ductile. Ductile or ductility. We another property is there. We can say ductile or ductility. So what is that? This is also property of metal. Do you agree? The property of metal. The property of metal by which they can be drawn into wires. By which they can be drawn into wires. They can be drawn into wires. Is called ductility. Is called ductility. So the materials which are having ductility, we can call them as ductile. See the materials means metals here having both malleability and ductility. So those are malleable and ductile. Means the metals can be drawn into. Malleability we have already seen, so we'll see the ductility. So ductility is what the property of metal by which they can be drawn into wires. So metals can be drawn into wires. If you take a copper metal, so they are they can be drawn into wires. We all use copper wires in our electrical circuits. Okay, the whatever wires you are finding you are finding in your home. They all are ninety percent of maximum of them are copper wires. So copper and aluminium are mainly used in making the wires. Both copper is also metal, aluminium is also a metal. Okay, this property of metal, which property of metal, so that they can be drawn into wires. That is called ductility. The property of metal by which they can be drawn into wires is called ductility. The property of metal by which they can be beaten into thin sheets is called malleable. So these two definition are very much important. Definitely the question will come on this properties of metal. This either they will ask what are the write some properties of metal, uh, what are the difference between metals and non-metals, or in definition one mark or two mark. This question will be fixed. Define malleability or define malleability and ductility. Or define ductility. If they ask for one mark, they will ask it separately. If they ask for two mark, definitely define malleability and ductility will be the question. So please concentrate on this. I hope these two points are clear. Okay. So now this is also clear. Fourth point is clear now. Now we we'll move to fifth point. That is metals are tensile. Tensile means they have the strength to control their stress they have the strength to handle the stress without any strain see uh, handling stress is also important okay metals how much ever stress you can put maximum they can handle the stress without having any strain they can handle the stress that we call this tensile strength okay with that we call it as tensile strength Easily they will not cut down. If you if you apply some stress means they will not easily deform. I hope you are understanding. 
deformation will not happen easily even though you apply more stress okay so that is the property we call it as tensile property so next one they have high melting and boiling points see metals are having high melting and boiling points so if you want iron to melt you have to heat it more than 1100 degrees celsius so around about almost 1500 degrees celsius more than 1100 if you say so melting of iron takes more than 1100 degrees celsius which is very very high temperature so if you take boiling point of water or melting point of water it is 0 degrees celsius and 100 degrees celsius boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius melting point of water is 0 degrees celsius but when it comes to metals if you take iron the melting point of iron is more than 1100 degrees celsius so they have high melting and boiling point see remember solids are having the melting point liquids are having the boiling point even though metals are solids maximum of them solids okay they are have all the metals those are having solid they are having high melting point but only mercury mercury is what it is in liquid state it is having high boiling point so metals are having high melting and boiling point high means more than uh, 800 degrees celsius more than 500 degrees celsius they are not having less boiling point they are having high not low melting or boiling point they are having high melting point as well as high boiling point metals are having high melting point and high boiling point next seventh one they are good conductors of heat and electricity metals conduct properly they are the good conductors of heat and electricity they conduct properly okay they are the good conductors of heat and electricity so metals are allowed heat is allowed to pass through the metals they it can be passed heat can be passed through the metals if you heat one end of the metal that heat will be easily transferred to the other end of the metal similar way electricity is also easily transferred it can be easily transferred to the metals you can easily how heat is transferred one example very easy if you are having hot tea in the plastic cup you will not feel the heat your fingers will not feel the heat of that tea but if you have the heat tea in a silver cup or a steel cup okay steel is the alloy but it's the mixture of metals okay there you feel that or in copper uh, uh, silver cup or steel cup they or metal cup there you will feel that that heat is uh, coming to your finger there you feel the heat of tea so there is a transfer of heat so metals allow the transfer of heat to pass through them and uh, metals allow the electricity to pass through them so that is why they are the good conductors of heat and electricity here we come to one uh, property that is called conductivity what is conductivity the property of metals the property of metals by which by which they can conduct or allow the transfer of conduct electricity and heat or you can say heat and electricity they allow heat and electricity conduct means passing allowing allowing the heat to pass through them allowing the electricity to pass through them that is conductivity so this is regarding they are the good conductors of heat and electricity metals are good conductors of heat and electricity you should remember this metals are the good conductors they are the good conductors of heat and electricity see in electricity we are using almost all aluminium wires and we are using almost all copper wires so maximum we are using copper and aluminium wires in the electrical circuit okay
so why because they are the good conductors of heat and electricity because why it happens because of metals are having free electrons metals are having free electrons so that they can easily conduct the electricity okay so next last one sonorous sonorous means what sonorous means what the property of metals i will write here the property of metals by which they produce a sound the property of metal the property of metal by which they can produce the sound they can produce ringing sound we can say or sound they can produce ringing sound see sonorous means when the metal if you beat the metal there will be a kind of ringing sound okay if you beat uh, iron you can feel some kind of sound where if you beat the wood or a stick made up of wood so they will not feel any sound there a kind of sound sonorous sound that is ringing will when you beat it will come when you beat it a metal suppose if you beat a iron rod or iron material you will feel some kind of sound there you can hear some kind of sound there that is we call it as sonorous it is a we can call it you can feel a ringing kind of sound there i hope you are getting my point there will be a ringing kind of sound when you beat metal or iron but when it comes to stick or wood even though you beat it many times you will not hear any sound a sound is heard only when you beat a metal that we call it as that property of producing the sound ringing like sound is called sonorous property so the metals are sonorous so i hope these all our points are clear with materials that is metals so example of metals i will write example of there are so many examples of metals you can write if you wish i will give the homework of that okay but i will tell you some gold some metals gold iron silver sodium manganese okay copper aluminium these all are okay mercury mercury is a special metal why it is special metal it is in liquid state question might be asked which is the metal present in liquid state the metal present in liquid state is mercury you should remember all these things gold iron silver sodium manganese copper aluminium mercury there are still so many metals potassium lithium these all are metals okay we can have still many more metals so you can uh, list them so these are some examples of metals i have given okay so you should remember all these properties of metals so what is metals what are the metals and what kind of property they have generally they are appearing in solid state except mercury which is in liquid state generally they are hard okay and general metals are having lustrous property so lustrous also i should have explained okay lustre what is lustre means so where should i write so lustre means the property of metal by which they have a shiny surface the property of metal the property of metal by which they have a shining surface by which they have a shining surface is called lustre or lustre property this is called this is called lustre property okay this is called lustre property and metals are possessing that property they can be called as lustrous when metals are possessing that uh, property we can call them as lustrous 
okay the property of metal by which they have shining surface metals are having shining surface smooth shining surface is there that is lustre okay that is lustre lustre property and the metals are called as lusters and they are malleable and ductile you guys know that what is malleable and what is ductile so malleability the property of malleability and property of ductility should be this is very much important these two are very much important okay you have to perfect these two very much important all are important out of the these two are very much important and they are having tensile strength that means they can be have they can sustain more stress without any strain okay i hope you understood they can sustain more stress without undergoing any strain that means it is difficult to deform them very easily difficult to deform the metals very easily they are having high melting and boiling points as i told iron is having high melting point and copper is having high melting point so usually metals are having high melting points and boiling point when it comes to mercury it is having high boiling point so both uh, they are having high melting point and high boiling point boiling point they are the good conductors of heat and electricity i already told about this metals are the good conductors of heat and electricity they allow the heat to pass through them they allow the electricity to pass through them they are sonorous means when they are beaten they produce uh, ringing like sounds so that is why they are called sonorous so these two are important what is malleability the property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets that is called malleability the property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets is called malleability when it comes to ductility the property of metals by which they can be drawn into wires is called ductility okay so this is regarding your first class so last day we have come across conductivity we come across everything we come across so please note down all these points in one notebook you please note down all these points whatever i told so in the next class we we'll learn about the physical properties of non metals okay element atom and uh, we'll come across difference between metals and non metals and all other things will be learned in the next class thank you